What if it rained food? What if Earth was a cube? What if we had nine lives? What if bits could fly? It's absurd. If money grew on trees, if we didn't have these, if we walked through life slightly magnetical, it's absurd. Absurd hypothetical. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Absurd Hypotheticals, the show where we overthink dumb questions so you don't have to. I'm your host, Marcus Lehner, and I'm joined here today by Chris Yee and Ben Storms. Say hi, guys. Hey, I'm Chris. Hey, I'm Ben. Is it too early in the podcast to start complaining? Like, yes. before we say any other words? <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> totally, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, too friggin' bad, because my back hurts. <laughs> start off there. This isn't so, a new thing, right? Because you you complained about your back before on the show. I have complained about my back before. It is particularly bad and has been hurting since um, Monday, or actually late Sunday. So over the weekend, I went up to New Hampshire, to Nashua, and attended KidsCon New England, which is like this really cool festival where it's like mostly for artists to, to showcase to kids, and like the target age range for this convention is like 8 to 12. And it's pretty awesome. They have, like, people dressed up in cosplay. There was, like, one of those giant Pikachus there. Like, the the big Pikachu costume. Mm. Was he wearing a detective hat? No, no detective hat. I don't know if you could get a detective hat big enough for that Pikachu. It was big. (laughs) I mean, you can try. Anyhow, the reason I was there was I was showcasing my game De-Enabled, which you can see on marcus Scenics games on nerdchomp if you're interested it's a tabletop but, game right not not a yeah video so game. it is not a video game it is a card game where you are basically trying to pass cards to each other but every time you pass cards you get these uh, mutations and the mutations are stuff like you have to have t-rex arms or you have crab claws or you got to stand on one leg and it's basically like a card game form of twister where you end up in all of these weird physically in all these weird different shapes trying to pass cards around which is a whole lot of fun, especially with the kids, because I love making their parents do it. It's not so fun when you're an adult and you have to play it for eight hours straight. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> well, that's your own fault. <laughs> yes, it is my own fault. But it does not preclude me from complaining, because I just did. Um, and I think to add on top of that, just to give you an, an idea of what it's like to be in my body right now, um, we're going away for the weekend, and we've kind of run out of food, but it doesn't make sense to buy food before we're away for like three days. And so we were kind of just in the last dregs of what's around the house. So for dinner today, I had like leftover dumplings from like a dumpling place and then like two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to go with it. (laughs) So my stomach is kind of like, what the fuck are you even doing right now? (laughs) What kind of dumplings were they? Uh, They're like steamed dumplings. Like Like, what what was in them? Like meat? Uh, meat, and one of them was like those those juicy dumplings where there's like a bunch of liquid inside too. Those are good. Mm, Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, they're they're not as good on day three, but they're very good <laughs> with PB, PB and J. <laughs> yeah, and with PB and J on the side, so <laughs> my tummy is just it, it's figuring out what what it wants to do with all these wonderful goodies I've given it. This is a very strong non sequitur, but have you guys ever heard about dipping a peanut butter sandwich in chili? Because apparently that's a thing that some people do. What? Not peanut butter and jelly. I want to make that clear. Just peanut butter. So a peanut butter sandwich, not yes. just peanut butter. <laughs> not just peanut butter. Yeah. But dipping that in chili, the same uh, way you dip like a grilled cheese in tomato soup. I mean, I guess apparently I would try it's a it. thing. I actually want to try it. I've never heard it as a thing, but I think I would try it. Yeah, I would definitely try it. I think it'd be good. Also, it took me a while to get the right mental image because I was imagining like chili powder. I'm like, how do you have like a bowl of this like <laughs> powder <laughs> to dip a sandwich in? Like, <laughs> how does that even like? Fine, you can do it, but like that seems like it's gonna be a lot of chili powder, and also like (laughs) you gotta pour a lot of it to make a bowl of powder. (laughs) Right, seems wasteful. Um, that was unrelated to almost anything, but that's okay. That's PB and J dipping. Yeah, it was adjacent liquid. Yeah, anything anything to make peanut butter like more liquidy or like edible is good with peanut butter because peanut butter is just so good by itself that it just. It allows really it to go with anything like it boggles my mind that some people don't like peanut like in di- other countries they think it's gross yeah not only that it boggles my mind that like a good portion of the population are denied peanut butter because they are allergic to it this is also yeah true. makes me very sad is that you think that's like karma like the like you were terrible in a, in a previous life and now you're not allowed to eat peanut butter I don't really want to call everyone that has peanut allergies, like <laughs> evil <laughs> not now they, they're improving but like maybe their past life wasn't so great Sure. <laughs> it's a hard line to draw, but 
Mark is the same. Is it though? I don't like this allergy based reincarnation theory you've posited, Marcus. Yeah. Hey, like, like, do you, like, I don't know. Maybe that's the way it works. Are you smooth or chunky peanut butter? Okay, so I buy exclusively smooth peanut butter. But if I'm at some place place and they have the chunky peanut butter, that's like a treat. That's like an exotic treat if they have the chunky peanut butter. I buy Teddy's super chunky and it is the greatest. Is that just like a jar of peanuts? It's like half peanuts. It's It's so good. (laughs) It's amazing. I don't know if you leave peanuts long enough if they get like stuck together, but I feel like that's what like extra chunky peanut butter is. It is very chunky. Also, it is local. They're actually based in Everett, Massachusetts, which is like right next to where Marcus and I live. Mm Mm-hmm. Can you grow crops in Massachusetts? The weather seems like shit. I mean, you probably could at one point. I don't know. Some crops? Like, we get, like... I don't think they grow their own peanuts. I want to make that abundantly clear. (laughs) Like, we got seven months of winter. We got, like, two weeks of spring and fall on either end. And then we have, like, five months of, like, savanna, but also humid heat. So I don't know when crops would like to grow. I'm going to put my foot down and say that Boston's actually not all that humid. (laughs) As someone who was born in Florida and goes there relatively frequently... Well, Florida's different. It's humid. <laughs> yeah, I'm, but I mean, it's like it's like ex, it's like stupidly humid. Okay, I just I I wouldn't I wouldn't say that the Boston area is a humid place. But the, the summers are humid compared to like like the like other parts of the South. I like, mean, people in Boston basically just like to complain about the weather, no matter what the weather is like. <laughs> this is true. Admittedly, it usually sucks, but. I think that's how we ended up here, because I just started complaining. I just default complain about the weather. <laughs> yeah, we just kind of, yeah. This is where all complaints wind up. We had some weird, like, peanut thing in there. Yeah. Even for us, this has been a very interesting intro topic. Very Not scattered. interesting, rambling and scattered brained. I was using interesting loosely. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Anyhow, we actually got a lot of stuff to get to today, because it is Father's Day, and we are doing a worst and best animal dad's bracket just like the mother's day one you can't just assume they listen to our mother's day episode chris we have to explain it every time well, we also we did a mother's day one say that we did a mother's day one they can watch the mother's day one or listen to it because it's not a watching thing it's an audio medium <laughs> unless they're on youtube in which case they can watch it but yeah. it's still basically an audio medium thing i yeah. wouldn't recommend <laughs> i wouldn't uh <laughs> don't tell them not to watch it <laughs> we, we don't demand your full attention <laughs> yeah exactly feel free to alt tab it <laughs> yeah <laughs> Anyhow, so the way this works is we have, between us, all selected a total of eight dads that we think might be the best animal dad, and we're going to put them head-to-head-to-head in a contest and declare the winner. And then once we have the winner of the best dad bracket, we're going to move on to the worst dads and find the absolute worst dad in the entire animal kingdom. So, to get us started off, it's going to be me with the Greater Flamingo versus Chris's Praying Mantis. So... I don't think, I'm going to preface this by saying I don't think Flamingo is going to win this bracket. But I put it in because I really like that the fl- the Flamingo, I guess, dad, the, his particular dadness exists in the world. So the cool thing about the Flamingo, and what caught my eye and had me pick him, was that it was labeled on this list. It was like, you know, most committed dad, you know, most uh, hearty dad, most attentive dad. And then Flamingo was listed as most liberal dad. And I'm like, wait, how does that work? So basically what flamingos are all about is they're all about gender equality. So the flamingo will build half the nest. They'll incubate the egg like half the time. Once the baby's born, they'll like stay with the mom and do like half the chores and half the like raising and half the teaching. And they actually split all the things that animals usually like just do one or the other. They split it 50-50 between the two flamingo parents, which I think just builds a really nice, healthy family dynamic. And that is my case for the flamingo. Okay. And then the praying mantis. So you may have heard about this, about the praying mantis, that they exhibit what's called sexual cannibalism. And yes, that's what it sounds like. Yep. (laughs) It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. So basically the female, during sex, the female will eat the male. (laughs) They usually start by like biting off the male's head and then go from there. And this happens about a quarter of the time that the male... The female will eat the male. And then, like, the rest of the time... So, like, a male will often have, like, multiple sexual encounters in its life. So, eventually, it'll probably be eaten by a female. Yeah, that's not not great odds. And the reason for sexual cannibalism has been debated. But one theory is that um, once the male's head has been bitten off, its sexual movements, like the motions and stuff, they become more vigorous. 
and that actually increases the chance of fertilization. Oh huh. my. Yeah. You know, maybe having sex a second time might actually increase the chance <laughs> right. of fertilization further. Hi, Prey Mantises. I want to talk about probability. <laughs> and another theory is that some males are afraid to dismount because they know that they're going to get eaten, so they just stay on, and it, um, it increases like the duration of the sexual encounter, which also increases the chance of fertilization. <laughs> so fear. Uh, and then the third alternate theory is just bitches be crazy <laughs> off <biting laughs> man's heads like that. Right. Yeah. So basically, yeah, in order for them to become a father, they have to navigate this cannibalistic female world, and they're willing to do it because they're good dads. They want to do it. All right, here's my argument. They're not actually dads, though. Technically, they're not dads yet. Because <laughs> they're usually, they're, they're like dead then before like it's even done being fertilized. But they want, they want so bad to be a dad, though. <laughs> they want it. They do want it. <laughs> However, but they could also just want sex that badly. That's also, <laughs> that is also a very strong argument. True. So I think I think just I think by I think the praying mantis is just not a dad. Like I just think they just he's just disqualified from the bracket. Do- does not dad. Does not dad. <laughs> we we stand with the D and D. He's never gonna play catch with this kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna argue against that. I guess that's it's reasonable. True. All right. All right. Flamingo's moving on up. So next up on our bracket. We have the seahorse versus the red fox. Chris, you're team seahorse, and I think I already know that these ones are pretty good dads. Yes. So I'm team seahorse, and what you may already know, or maybe you don't know about seahorses, is that the male is actually the one that gets pregnant and and gives birth. It's not the female. So what happens is the male has like a pouch, and the female deposits its eggs into that pouch. And the male fertilizes the egg and then lets it incubate in that pouch for 45 days or like around then, um, around that time frame. And then the seahorses are born and they actually experience contractions like just like a human does when they give birth. Oh, fun. Yeah. It's sort of the same process, kind of, only not really. (laughs) Yeah. Eh, Close enough. It's got to be like basically the only dad to give birth, right? Uh, there are a few, uh, I think... It's a small list. Yeah, there's some species related to seahorses that that do as well. Regular horses, sea urchins. <laughs> sea donkeys. Sea dragons are one. That's I forget what the other one is. Is there actually a thing called sea dragons? Yeah, they look really cool. Oh, are those the leafy ones? Yes. yes. Yeah, the leafy ones are so goddamn <laughs> cool. <laughs> one downside... That might be a hit against seahorses is that once they give birth, they don't actually really nurture their young. They mm. kind of just let them do their own thing. <laughs> but oh man, Chris, you're having, you're you're not selling your seahorse contender. I mean, very I'm, well. not, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm looking to tell the truth. I'm not like for them, no matter what. We we're, we're trying to determine like fact. Who this is, is the best dad? Scientific study, Marcus. Yeah. So we have to Science take that into consideration. Study, ben. <laughs> So that's your that's your that's your pitch. It's that's a good my pitch. pitch. It is really a good a very good pitch. So I I chose the red fox. Um, the red fox does not give birth. I will I will concede that point. <laughs> oh, just, you mean the males? You mean yes? Sorry, the <laughs> male. <laughs> they do give birth, they just magically not magically appear. <laughs> yeah. So the funny thing about about the red fox, um, just sort of generally, they're kind. Of, seems like they're kind of like good dads. They like sort of like play fight with their pops and stuff and do all that sort of stuff and they they hunt her day and everything but the really cool thing that they do um is that you know they they do for the first like three months that the pups are after they're born the 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 male fox will go and hunt every day and bring back food to the female and the pups but then after three months he stops but that's not great ben that's but not great ben what he does is get food and bury it close to the den to teach them how to sniff around and forage for food. Wait, what? Mm. Right? Isn't that adorable and awesome? <laughs> I love the world we live in. That's so cool, right? It is pretty cool. Like I just, I, I just, I just have this little image of like this little puppy just hopping out of a cave, and he's like, and then he's like, smells it, and he like digs, and there's just like already a dead animal like six inches below the dirt. I did it. Well, 
actually so the, the step in my mind that i'm seeing um is is he like looks up at the dad and is like you know where's the food and the dad kind of shrugs and he's looking around and he <laughs> smells something and the dad kind of starts like tilting his head over and he's like oh let me go mm-hmm. that way i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know where is the food <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so they kind of do like these little like Easter egg hug, Easter egg hunts with you know yeah probably like carcasses or something, which is a little less cute but whatever <laughs> in order to teach their their kids how to to hunt and and forage, which I think is really cool. That's, that's pretty cool. So, so, huh? They l- don't literally give birth though, which <laughs> I mean yeah, that is a strong contender. I don't. W- which one's more important? Do you think? So the red fox has the nurturing part. It is very good nurturing, but it is also very good birth. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right. So, so the one thing swaying me towards the right, the red fox is that Chris, you said they were pregnant for what forty five days. Yeah, which isn't very long. It's not that. That's long. true. That's not all that long. And they do kind of ditch him after that. They do. I don't know if I think the red fox is a better dad, or if I'm just so excited about what I learned about red foxes. <laughs> I would go either way. I will. I, I will. I'm, I'll vote for the red fox really because i mean if you have a like a human mom that gives birth and then just go like abandons its baby that's not good that's fair okay that's reasonable <laughs> <laughs> when you put it that way all right yeah in those terms yeah i think it's much clearly the it's much more clearly the red fox <laughs> okay so we will go red fox wow when we were first like saying we we're gonna do this and i was thinking about animal dads i figured seahorse is a pretty strong shoe in just because yeah. of the whole giving birth thing I, yeah, I thought they also took on a bunch of the roles of the mother, too. I thought, like, they did, like, a bunch of the taking care of things, like, after they were born. But like, they I, don't do that. I nope. kind of assumed that, too. So, that, that, that <laughs> does hurt them. So, That's hey, a big strike. More you know. All right. Next bracket, we've got the Arowana versus the Emperor Penguin. So, the Arowana is a fish. I'll start there. <laughs> Good start. <laughs> Important detail. Yeah. So... First off, the cool thing about, like, they do the good parenting stuff. Like, they they take care of the kids. They build nests for their young, which I don't know how you build a nest as a fish, but it's pretty cool. Like, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I feel like it's got to be much harder to build a nest underwater when you have no hands. Than, right. Than if you have, like, a... Hands? Uh, yeah, hands. <laughs> that was the thing. <laughs> but, uh... What's really cool, why I pick pick specifically the arowana, because it's not the only fish that, like, builds a nest and does these things, is that they are notable for being what they call a mouth brooder. So, a bunch of fish and, like, some frogs, they'll put, like, a whole, all the eggs and stuff in their mouth to protect it as the the kids grow up, as, like, sorry, as before the eggs hatch. This guy goes a step further. He's not keeping the eggs in his mouth. He's keeping, actually, the baby fish in his mouth. So, he can have... They, they'll they harbor hundreds of tiny baby fish in their mouth and then like every once in a while he'll like open his mouth and let them out and like let them explore a bit and then go and like collect like go collect them out again to protect them again but they make a point to say that he always takes special care to seek each one out and suck them back into his mouth <laughs> actually because i found this during my research too and i saw a video of it and it was actually kind of sad because there are humans that are like opening his mouth to show you the babies inside, and it was like freaking out. I was like, no, don't look, oh, that's don't take the babies. That's terrifying for that poor fish. Yeah, I can't imagine having like all those tiny baby fish in my mouth for gotta be quite a while. That's gonna be like gross and squirmy. Yeah, I don't wanna be a minivan. I, I just feel like that's a lot of pressure not to accidentally eat them. <laughs> no, that's also the other thing I kept thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> or don't even just like, don't like swallow too vigorously. Yeah, like, like, have you ever had too much saliva in your mouth while you're like saying, you're, you have like saliva in the back of your throat while you're speaking. You're like, I don't want to swallow in the middle of a sentence. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes you just can't help it. Yeah. What if that saliva was actually a small child? <laughs> <laughs> just, just think about that one. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not a great thought. So that I think that just makes them a better dad. Yeah, that's it's a pretty strong contender. Yeah, that's good. So the Emperor Penguin. So if you did listen to our our Mother's Day episode, um, the Emperor Penguin, I believe, also appeared there. Yes, I think mm-hmm. the Emperor Penguin made it to the finals. I think so. Or the yeah. semifinals. Yeah, it did well. They had pretty good moms. Yeah, they have they have very good moms because basically, so after after the the egg is has been has been laid, the the mom 
basically t- sets out on this like like multiple month like journey out to sea to get food, which they then bring back to the the eventually hatched child, um, which is pretty good mothering. Um, but you might be asking yourself, what is going on with the egg and the dad during this time? Well, I don't know if you know this, but penguins live in the cold. It's very cold and windy. And it's very bad for the egg to be exposed to that cold and wind. So basically, penguins aren't good at doing a lot of things. But one thing they are apparently good at doing is making a slightly concave shape with their body and bouncing an egg on their feet. So they do that the entire time until the mother gets back. Oh, jeez. Like, like, like feet up? Yep. They basically keep their feet together, bounce the egg there, and have a little, like, flap on their belly sort of goes over the top of it. And they just, like, huddle like that not moving and sort of like break the wind for it i don't remember yeah i don't remember how long the mothers are away the one i was seeing was about two months that's a pretty long time and Ooh, they wow. do not eat during this time or like move during this time mm. and if they break wind during this time it'll actually warm up the egg a little bit <laughs> hey there you go oh also other fun thing sometimes the trick does hatch before the mom gets back uh, with the food and in this situation and i quote Dad will feed the chick with milk he produces from his esophagus, which... What? Uh, yep. Uh, I don't want my, my esophagus to produce milk. Mm, good old <laughs> esophagus milk. It's cold. How does your esophagus make... It's, esophagi are not built for that. They're not. Apparently theirs are. I think it's the first time I've heard esophagus used as plural. <laughs> I also agree. <laughs> yeah. So that's my... My entry. Is there like in. a milk sack? I'm sorry. Is there a milk sack in the esophagus? <laughs> I honestly was weird enough and not weirded out enough that I did not look into it further. I did not want to know <laughs> anything more. Okay. Okay. This is another tough choice. Mm, milk esophagus. Milk esophagus. Well, that's and not the main thing. <laughs> starvation slash. Yeah. No moving for months. I don't have a number of days, but I will say that the, the arowana fish cannot eat while it has all the young in its mouth. That, that is, is, that that is true. So they both go without eating. Mm-hmm. The arowana is more adorable. The emperor penguin is more dedicated, I feel like. Yeah. I I I kind of like... So if it just kept the, the, the babies in the mouth the whole time, I think I would be a little bit off of it. But the fact that it lets it out, let them explore a little bit, then pulls them all back in, really, I'm, yeah. I'm very much a fan of that. I do like it, but I, I don't know if I could ever love a child enough to make milk esophagus, <laughs> to make esophagus <laughs> milk. That's also a fair point. <laughs> esophagus Ugh. milk is a decent uh, sort of just Maybe like bullet band. point. Yeah. Yeah, esophagus milk might do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna move, let's move the penguins up. Penguins, All right, penguins. penguins. Okay, penguins advance. Next up, we have the thing whose name I will not attempt to pronounce that Chris <laughs> chose, Andrea. Yes. So what I chose is the, it's called an antichinus. Antichinus. Uh, which okay. is a marsupial. and It kind of looks like a mouse, sort of. Very similar to a mouse. And, um... I'm just going to say right now that based on how our praying mantis versus flamingo thing went, this is probably going to lose. <laughs> oh, now, now I do remember reading about this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what happens with these guys is that they pretty much always die after sex. <laughs> yeah. So like the praying mantis was like a, like a fourth of the time they get eaten. This is basically every time they have sex, they die. <laughs> oh, no. And what happens is that when they have sex... The corticosteroid levels in their blood increases, and that causes gastrointestinal ulcers. Um, it stifles their immune system, and so it like exhausts them like crazy. So their fur starts to fall out. Their body uh. basically like disintegrates, and they have like internal bleeding. Then they just mm-hmm. die. <laughs> yeah. The one thing that that you haven't mentioned did you did you were going to mention the length? Yes, I'm going to okay. get to that. Cool. All right, just making sure that was coming up. <laughs> so yeah, the. The reason that this happens is that the corticosteroids actually, like, allows them to maximize the amount of energy that they have during their mating period, uh, because they really only have one shot at it, so they have to, like, make the most of it. So the mating period actually consists, it can last up to, like, 12 hours, and it can be with, like, many partners at a time. They basically just try to get as many partners as possible 
within up to 12 hours. Oh my god, that's wild. Yeah, 12 hours. They don't eat, drink, or sleep during this period, and they just go crazy. Uh, and that's basically, that's just to increase their chances of fertilization. So, yeah. <laughs> god, like, if they, if they switch from partner to partner, like, what, being the female uh, Antichinus? Antichinus, yeah. yeah. Antichinus? Like, getting them... Being the last female when it's already losing its hair and, like, stumbling <laughs> around and, like, basically dead, that's got to be a not fun time. Yeah. The thing is, uh, because they have multiple partners, they usually have multiple litters, even though they're dead, but they have multiple offspring with different females, so they have, like, multiple families. Okay. Okay. Even though technically, like we established before, they're technically not fathers. Right. Tell me about the, uh... The Rhea, Ben. So the Rhea is it, it is a South American flightless bird. Looks kind of emo emu y a little bit. Um not emo y like my brain apparently wanted to say. <laughs> are they black? They have like, can they have like a little Uh their eyes are black, which is pretty emo. Do they like Nightmare Before Christmas? Uh I mean maybe. <laughs> they could. They definitely could. Um Hot Topic. <laughs> Just think about just hot topic in isolation is just really but funny. I don't know. We just we just, we Chris was like I've exhausted all my emo now. Yep. <laughs> yes. Emo I'm people done. shop at Hot Topic, right? <laughs> um, basically, so sort of off to a bad start. They are polygamous. the The male does have a harem of like two to twelve females, but they actually do pretty much all of the uh like child slash egg raising the females leave all of their eggs with the male and then run away to find other males <laughs> <laughs> yeah which yeah i know um the dad will incubate incubate all the eggs up to like 60 of them for over two months apparently and this i didn't fact check this particular line but apparently with only like two weeks of food to sustain them which seems like bad planning evolution but <laughs> i don't know um and then also raises the chicks on his own for nearly two years um, and is, like, super uber protective of them and, like, charges anything that, like, gets near them and stuff, too. So Shit. That's just, that's just like, all, like, checking off good dad. Yeah, yeah it's a pretty, check marks. a pretty good, yeah. A I will point strong... out. Are you done? Yes, I am done. I will point out that for our best mom bracket, the octopus won specifically because she survived, she sacrificed her life. For a child. I will say that the distinguishing factor is probably that she was a mother at that point. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is more sacrificing your life for sex, which is, although also admirable, um, <laughs> slightly different. I mean, I just, I just have, like, what I imagine is just, like, you have these birds and, like, you have the couple, you have the two birds of the couple. And then, like, immediately afterwards, the mom just runs off and the dad's just standing there left with, like, a nest of eggs. And he just, like, looks down at them. He's like, don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Except that it's actually like eight moms that run off and leave all their eggs. Yeah, and that, that exact scene happens eight times on a loop. Yep. <laughs> which you would think would make it sadder, but actually it doesn't make it that much sadder. I mean, I think this is actually a pretty easy choice. Yeah. I think yeah, it's, it's, it's the Rhea. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's going to yeah, be the Rhea. Yeah. All right. All right. So we have all, that's all our animals. So now we just got to finish out the last, the semifinals and finals. Going back to the other side of the bracket. We have the flamingo versus the red fox. Oh, let's refresh our memories. Yes, yeah. yeah. So the flamingo was the gender equality. Mom does half, I do half. We're big happy family flamingo. Right. And the red fox has the adorable food hiding to teach its kids how to forage. It's just the red fox. Like I, it's we can really discuss cute. this, but it's a, kind of a waste of time, right? It's just the, <laughs> it's it's just just so the red cute. fox. It's too adorable. <laughs> like that's some Disney movie <laughs> shit right there. Like. It's really yeah, good. Like if it was in a Disney movie, I would expect the dad to get killed by a hunter within like 15 minutes. <laughs> no, like, 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 no joke. If I saw this in a Disney movie, I would think it was bullshit. Like, <laughs> that there's no way that's life. actually, yeah. But it does. <sighs> but it does. All right. Red, Red Fox Red is Fox, in the finals. Yeah. Let's, let's bounce back to the other side. We have, this one's gonna be a little trickier. We have the Emperor Penguin, which is best known for holding up its feet and esophagus milk. Um, versus the Rhea, which was the one we just talked about with the good dad bird. Two birds enter, none fly out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they 
they are both flightless birds, aren't they? I just realized that. Oh, uh, now I kind of wish the flamingo was the one who made it, because then it would be an all bird bracket. I know. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. How do we decide this? These are these are both really, really strong contenders. I still think the Rhea wins. It's I, I think I, I think I agree. It's like yeah, something I think the about Rhea just do, the... the Rhea does more, especially because it's doing it like alone. Like the penguin's got the mom's doing all the work. Really, the penguin is just standing there holding it. Yeah, egg. the penguin's only right. doing one thing. The Rhea's doing everything. Let's let's be clear. The one thing is very impressive. However, the amount of things and the amount of eggs. That's just one egg for the penguin. Up to yeah. sixty eggs for the Rhea. Plus, I think I've said the the phrase esophagus milk enough times for my lifetime, so <laughs> yeah, don't we don't need to talk anymore. about the emperor penguin anymore. <laughs> okay, so so we're good with Rhea? So the Rhea, yeah. We're good with Rhea. All right. Oh, and that leaves the red fox versus the Rhea in the finals of the best dad bracket. God, both of these could be Pixar movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they could. So Ooh, I think yeah. I think the Red Fox would be a Disney movie. Rhea would be a Pixar movie. You're right. Yeah, the Rhea would be. A, yeah, that's that's very that's very <laughs> true. Yeah. I guess the Rhea is basically Finding Nemo, and the Red Fox is basically fucking, I don't know, like, Bambi, but... Bambi, but only one-third of the way through the movie. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Bambi, but you turn, turn it off and say, show over kids, like, 20 minutes in. I should do that when I have kids someday. I should I should definitely only show them the first, like, 30 minutes of Bambi. Like, that's a really great short film, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just don't do it with Up. Aww. Aww. The only, only show, like... You you show the first half of Bambi and then cut to the net the rest of it's up. Yeah. I mean I feel I feel like a Pixar movie is more likely to win best animated picture over a Disney movie. That is actually a that is true and a very compelling argument for the victor <laughs> of this bracket. Probably I know nothing about I know nothing about Red Fox moms. Yeah, what is what's the Red Fox mom doing? So the Red Fox this? mom I think is mostly recovering, at least for the start. Actually, I think I think that the the mom is some kind of recovering and protecting from predators, like in the den. So like she's not she's not slacking, right? But the right. dad is doing all the hunting. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to think like like what I imagine the arbitrary criteria to be best dad is, and I think the Ray is just a little more on the nose on that image. Like it's just like the single parenting aspect is certainly very yeah. The Ray seems more dad, responsible. Yeah. The, like staying with the nest, like the the length of raising and all that. It's just, I think it just works out for the Raya. No, yeah. I I agree, Chris. I I agree, Raya. A dark horse. All right, three three zip. Raya is the best dad in the animal kingdom. You heard it first here. You heard it here first. <laughs> Either both of those would have worked. You first heard it here first. <laughs> you heard first here first bracket. <laughs> Uh, well, that was the that was the fun bracket. Let's get the depressing and your gross bracket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, I was I was I'm ha- I, like I'm feeling good about the animal kingdom right now, and I know my opinion is going to be the opposite by the time we're done with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. All right, all righty. Moving on to what is the worst dad? First pair in our bracket is grizzly bears versus lions. All right, so grizzly bears are. The first on our list of what is probably going to be a few cannibalistic fathers. Yes. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect it of grizzly bears, I'll be honest. (laughs) Funnily, when we talked about worst animal moms um, back when, black bears was the winner. And the black bear mother would just abandon any single cub on the assumption that it was not worth the energy to raise two of them. And so when I saw grizzly bears, I'm like, oh, it's probably just more of the same. No, not really. So grizzly bears are very territorial. Like, the dad grizzly bear has his territory, which could be up to 1,200 square miles it could consider its territory. And so basically, grizzly bears will just not raise their kids. They abandon the kid first. And then if the kid enters the grizzly bear dad's territory, and the dad's even just, like, remotely hungry, it'll just go and attack and kill the cub, even his own cub. They're just like, yeah, bears are opportunistic hunters, and it just doesn't give a shit, so it just eats its own kid (laughs) if it wanders into its 1,200 square mile radius. So, really just, it's so nonchalant again, where it's like, don't care, I'll eat the cub. Okay. And then the lion, the lion's actually pretty similar. So, it's not like Mufasa. (laughs) It's not accurate. Mufasa was the number one best dad, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in real life, lions will often kill their cubs and it's not because 
So, like, in our mom one, we covered a bunch of killing their cubs to, like, uh, benefit, like, other cubs. So, like, give them a better chance of living or something. Or to, like, some of them, like, ate their kids to, like, gain nutrients or something like that. But that's not why the lion kills their cubs. The reason they kill their cubs is because they don't want them to overtake them as the leader of the pride. Oh, my. Yeah. Mm. They basically just don't, to prevent, like, a, an uprising, they kill them. <laughs> Um, so and Scar, that, Scar is what the actual real life lion is. I guess so. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. <laughs> Basically, and then it was like a weird, like fact tacked on at the end, also to ensure that females are more likely to mate with them. <laughs> I like how they had to explain why it wants to be the king of the pride. It's like, yeah, it's don't worry, it's not for like pride. It's it's, it's for to sex. fuck more bitches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's for sex. All right, my gut reaction is that grizzly bears are worse because. At least the lion has, like, it's a bad reason, but it is a reason, right? Yeah, so one, th- one thing I read about lions, too, is that they also just, like, don't provide at all for their kids. Like, they just literally just lay there and let all the females do all the work. This is true. Yeah. So it's like a deadbeat dad who's sometimes murderous. That's not great. But then the grizzly bear is an abandoned dad who's does also gri- murderous. Does a grizzly bear always abandon? Yeah. Okay. So, the, so the mother, the the mother grizzly bear actually will intentionally like take the cubs out of the territory and like find a cave that's like hidden to make sure that the dad doesn't find the kids. So th- she teaches the cubs to avoid whatever that you know his space is. And he eats them. He doesn't just kill them, right? Yeah, no, he eats them. He's just he like literally is just like I'm hungry. Bam. I don't think the lion eats them. Yeah, I'm gonna go bears. <laughs> yeah, I'll go bears. That seems that seems fair. They're close. They're they're similar, but I'll go bears. I I think I think that like the lion at least has a justification for for it. It's a bad one, but at least it's there. Okay. Next up in the bracket, we have otters versus sand gobies. Whatever the fuck those are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the sand goby. So this this podcast, I guess it's going to be true for everybody in a minute. This podcast has taken away otters for me because. What I know about otters is that they float on their backs, they can, like, play with balls, and they can like, they hold hands when they sleep. That's what I know knew about otters going in. Otters are not good animals. They're, they're evil. They're terrible, and I hate them. But they're so, so let's cute. Go on to, yeah, let's go on to um, why they specifically make very bad dads. So when otter like, if the otters are experiencing a food shortage, they will take an otter pup hostage... Until the mother pays it a ransom of food. And so basically it'll grab the mother's kid away, which, you know, could be his kid. And it will, like, hold the baby otter underwater until the mother gives up its food that it has. Mm. Mm. Which is absolutely buckwild behavior. Within its own family. Yeah, within its own family. Because they're like that, you know, they're a fairly smallish group. Like, they're not, like, they don't travel in huge herds. Mm -hmm. Or, I don't know what you call a, a... bunch of otters a a gaggle i was I, I default to gaggle when i don't have another word i default to murder hmm a murder of otters and then this isn't exactly related to being a dad but it's like just puts more strikes against the otters being a good dad i guess they also like oftentimes will rape baby seals to death huh <laughs> that's not good and not really for any real reason like it just does it kind of for fun <laughs> Hmm. And then, so basically, like, it'll rave it for, uh, for over an hour and a half, it will do this. That is a long time. What, what it, that, and then also kills the baby seal because it also holds the baby seal underwater. And then it goes on to say, so when, when the seal pup dies, sometimes it'll just let go and begin to groom itself. Some otters, however, will hang on to the dead pup and continue to rape its dead and decaying course for up to a week later. That's pretty bad. This is just this is just not good behavior. No, I did just look up, and you actually have some options for a collective noun for otters that are very fun. You have a romp of otters. <laughs> well, I don't want to use romp in this context. A bevy of otters, a family of otters, which is kind of boring, or a raft of otters. Ooh, I like a raft, raft is the one. Raft is a raft rare. is the one. So yeah, so that was that's the crazy shit that otters do. Also, the, this this nasty mating stuff they do. They also. It's like a little rough, even on the female otters. So over 10% of the female otters they have sex with just drown during the act. Mm. 
And it's not just baby seals. Well, it happened to one guy's dog where his dog went swimming. Oh, and, God. Uh, not great. So mm, I don't like otters stay anymore. Away from otters. That's fair. They are just both. They are bad dads. They are bad animals. They are bad everything. And uh, that's my case. Cool. Ben, what the fuck is a sand goby? A sand goby is a fish. Is that <laughs> that's what fish? I thought. It's one of those fish that has kind of like fins to the side of its head that look kind of like whiskers, but aren't they just fins? But basically, the, the male sand goby starts off well because it, it's actually very diligent, diligent about guarding its eggs from predators. This is the worst dad bracket, Ben, you know. I, well, well, we're getting there. And sort of, sort of what happens is the, you know, the mom will go out to get food and stuff. And in that time, the dad will start eating the eggs, which cannibalism is common in the dad bracket. But sort of the mechanism of how it decides to eat the eggs is pretty bad. One, even if it has lots of extra food, it will still eat eggs. Oh, come on. And when, come it's, on, San Gobi. when it's picking the eggs to eat, it actually decides to eat the largest eggs, which is interesting because most of the time... It's the opposite. Yeah, large, large... Babies or eggs are usually a sign of, of healthy babies or eggs, which are more likely to survive. And so they're like really heavily protected. But large eggs also take longer to hatch. And so it eats the largest eggs so it can stop guarding the eggs faster and go back to mating. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> which is pretty bad. <laughs> no, that's real shitty. I think otters are still probably worse over... Well, otters are definitely worse overall as, like, beings. Yeah, but not not but maybe, all the things were related to dads for the otters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's not all dad-related. But if that was my dad, I would consider him a bad dad. <laughs> right, he's a, he's a poor example to the youth, but... <laughs> Ugh, Sango, that is... I The fact that he does it because he's lazy is right. pretty rough. Well, he's, he's lazy and horny. <laughs> They're both pretty bad. It's both pretty bad. So he doesn't... You said he guards the eggs. He does guard so the eggs. So, like, he does when, guard... When does he decide to switch? Uh, it's it's sort of, like, basically when the mother isn't around. Apparently, they'll generally generally eat around a third of the eggs. And just hope the mother doesn't notice? <laughs> I'm she, I'm sure she notices. She doesn't want to say anything. <laughs> um, I'm still leading on. I feel like taking, like, the pups hostage it's is, like, pretty bad. very... That's inten- pretty... It's very intentional. Yeah. Like, the, the thing about the sand goby is that, yes, he eats a third of the eggs... But two-thirds of them, he doesn't eat, and he does guard. So, it's kind of like, you know... I'd rather have a sand goby dad than an otter's dad. You, you uh, have two-thirds of the you time. You have 66% 6 of a chance of having a good dad. Yeah. <laughs> Which is better than odds than you have with an otter. So, I, I am cool going otters. Yeah, I'll go otter. All right. I, I'm a little sad they won, because I was going to make an otter defeat pun, but... I guess I just did anyway. So There's still opportunities, it. Ben. You just lo- lo- you wasted it. Opportunities, if you will. Anyway, the next bracket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so next we have sea bass versus bed bugs. And I did sea bass. I'm kind of annoyed that I went right after your sangobi because basically the same thing, only not as bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. well, And you already teased to us that bed bugs are pretty bad. So I'm pretty confident sea bass is going to lose this. But yeah, so sea bass does what most fish do. It like, spends... A lot of time protecting its eggs like very diligently at first and then once they hatch most of the fish just like swim away and like escape but the ones that don't it eats okay so it's, yeah it's literally, it's literally like the same behavior yeah. yeah same behavior not as bad well yeah it's it's not as bad because it it the ones that don't leave i would assume are probably weaker yeah and i'm pretty sure it does it for nutrients right so it doesn't do it because it's just lazy (laughs) right that's reasonable so okay well that's 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 pretty bad you may be okay because bed bugs are similar to our 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 praying mantis and um oh antichinus was that it yes you got it right ah got it uh up in the the good dad's bracket so i i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna go ahead and just preface this I've learned a lot of, like, really weird shit doing this podcast. This is the weirdest and probably most disturbing thing I have learned doing this podcast. Can, I, can we put a... Is there a disclaimer we can put on here? Like, if you value your innocence, Yeah, stop. maybe just... Yeah, you, just just skip forward, like, I don't know, <laughs> a couple minutes? I don't know. We don't have that choice. Well, yeah, we don't have that choice, so... I could unplug my headphones and just say, Please don't. Uh-huh. Please don't <laughs> yes, make me go yes. through this alone. Uh-huh. Gross. Ugh. So basically, <laughs> and then, ew. And then Chris, you can just edit those in as appropriate. 
basically bedbugs practice something called traumatic insemination. Uh huh. <laughs> which is <laughs> yes. <laughs> basically, so unlike great <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Unlike humans or most other vertebrates, uh, bedbugs, which are invertebrates, have one, like, like, like humans have a circulatory system and a lymphatic system that have different bodily fluids that transport different things. Um, invertebrates, for the most part, just have, like, one big system that sort of transports everything to everything. At some point in evolution, bedbugs decided to start skipping the traditional path that you take when mating. And instead, just punching through the abdomen of the female and injecting sperm <laughs> into the blood, like <laughs> this. Okay, that's actually real shitty. <laughs> yeah, this like organ cavity, and assuming that some of it will reach the ovaries. This is not great for the female. <laughs> um, apparently, actually, uh, bed bugs die off if they're like in like a lab setting. They actually die off really quickly. Because they kind of just keep mating and it actually will, like, eventually kill the females because they just keep, like, stabbing them to death, basically. <laughs> oh, so, like, the bit, like the bedbug females normally have to hide from the, the male bedbugs, like, so that they don't get attacked more times. Actually, <laughs> bedbugs have evolved a, a, basically, a pair of organs that are basically a target for male bedbugs. <laughs> It's like is this like the little fly on the urinals that they, they paint on there so you piss right there? Uh, kind of, yeah. That I think is is designed to like like make the, you know, stabbing happen away from vital places and stuff. <laughs> um because otherwise it just kind of happens wherever the male des- decides. The, the species for which sex ed is the most important. Right. You just point at the bug and say there. <laughs> So, yeah, so not exactly a parenting thing, but more the process of becoming a father, I guess, they are pretty bad at, I would say. (laughs) Yeah, so I had to learn that. Now you guys know it, too. I'm so sorry. (laughs) So I don't mind going CVAS here because that's more actual parenting, and I don't want to think about bed bug traumatic insemination anymore. The thing is... We already know that sea bass is going to lose to otters if otters win. If otters oh, make that's... it, that's okay. It's a bracket. Not these. Neither of these are finalists. Let's let's put the sea bass ahead. Fair enough. Let's yeah. go sea bass okay. so we can stop talking about this. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll just we'll just <laughs> pick the one that makes makes us talk about this bracket corner less. Right. Exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. Final bracket here on the worst ads. We have the Galata monkey versus the bottlenose dolphin. So. There's actually a bunch of shitty monkey dads, like chimpanzees are not great. The one thing I didn't like about the chimpanzees, just as an aside, is that they would, um, in order to, if they saw like a mother with a kid and they wanted to have sex with that mother, which I guess would be almost all the time, they're like, well, she's not going to have sex with me because she's already taking care of this kid. So I'm just going to murder and dismember this kid in front of her so that she's very aware that she doesn't have one anymore. Mm. But that's like other people's kids, so it's not exactly in the dad side. So I decided to go with the Galata monkey. And they are generally kind of absentee, not caring dads. Like, they're, they're doing their own, you know, being the alpha male type stuff. And, uh, you know, trying to stay dominant over the over the females and all that. But what stuck with me on this guy is that there was a couple stories of... They have what they call bachelor packs where it'll basically be a bunch of galata monkeys that don't have mates that'll w- run around and when they encounter like a a not a pride but you can, we can call it a pride where it's like one male with a bunch of females they'll go and challenge the male to try and uh, take them out and the males have to worry that when they a bachelor pack um comes by that they have to get the females on their side so that they have some support to fight all these monkeys off and the way that it get support in an emergency like when you know when it doesn't think the female is going to come outside is by grabbing one of the infants because they have to protect the monkey that has their baby <laughs> and in both ca- in the both the stories i read when the the infant that they had was seriously injured like you know after the monkey fought and the the, the galata monkey just like dropped it and left it there <laughs> to, and like continued with the females 
So basically use it as like a, a monkey shield, a, a little infant. A kid monkey shield. <laughs> a kid monkey shield, its own son. Okay. Um, it's funny you mentioned that other monkey that, that kills kids in front of their mother is... <laughs> You mentioned. <laughs> I want that sentence out of context. It's funny you mentioned. <laughs> you said that it wasn't their kids, but the bottlenose dolphin actually does this with their own kid. Mm. Wait, why? So they oftentimes they'll kill their own kid by like drowning them. So they'll like hold them underwater so they drown, or they'll like flip them out of the water and like they'll get exhausted to death out of the water. And the reason they do this is because they don't want the mothers to spend time raising the kid they just want to mate more <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so yeah that's that's the reason i like i like how as the, the intelligence level of the species goes up the more likely they are to end up in our worst dad bracket yeah this is true <laughs> like bears otters monkeys dolphins like they're all on the smarter side they are of the, pretty of smart the yeah kingdom. it's dolphin right there's no question it has to be dolphin <laughs> That's real bad, y'all. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, they have so many different ways. They, they, it's just not like one display. It's like, hey, I'm just gonna pick my poison. You'd think that they would like bite them or like eat them or something, but no, they like hold them underwater long enough to drown them, or they flip them out of the water, like continuously. Yeah, because you can't do it on just one. Like it's got to be like right. a bunch. Right. They hacky sack that kid. The dolphin equivalent of shaking a baby. Jesus. <laughs> All right. Uh. This has been less fun than the first one. Yeah. I'll say that. This is true. Fewer fewer Disney movies. Fewer Disney movies here. Lots one Disney villain, but we've already eliminated the lion. Yeah. All right. Um Grizzly Bear going back semifinals. Grizzly Bears versus Otters. So the Grizzly Bears were they have their 1200 square mile territory where they will just casually eat the cub if it wanders there. And then we have the Otter Hostage Taker Rapists. Hmm. <laughs> Huh. Okay. Mm, yeah, so... Sheerly on a... Uh, this is actually tough. Like, once again, clearly otters are the worst animal. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just trying to, to think of it in terms of, of parenting. I mean, in terms of parenting, otters aren't great either. <laughs> but they don't Poor generally... Poor models, you might say. They don't generally kill the child. Yeah, but the grizzly... Uh, so does the otter the kid otter usually stays with the dad for like while it's growing up right uh yeah i think they're in like a family like some kind of familial unit okay so they're yeah they're like stuck with the dad the grizzly unless bear of course it's one of the unless it's of course one of the 10 percent of female otters that it kills by mating with them right right <laughs> the grizzly bear though has a chance to like get away as long as they stay out of the territory Mm-hmm. so they're they're sort of like banished where the otters are like held hostage mm, when you put it that way the otter does sound pretty bad <laughs> yeah i think we're moving otters yeah. I think we're moving otters up yeah and then we have on the other side, oh yeah we have the sea bass <laughs> yeah sea bass versus the bottlenose dolphin sea bass. So let's just go ahead and slide these dolphins right on in sea bass i don't remember anything about except that it's boring and the bottlenose dolphin we're just gonna put right into yeah. the fire. yep <laughs> i agree so we have what's left the two dick bags of the sea Oh, God. Because dolphins, too, are just also generally douchey. Yeah, God, these animals suck. <laughs> uh, so I will say, I'm going to say, I think it's the dolphin. Because the otter, while it does lots of bad things, it'll only take the pup hostage if it needs food and it wants to get that ransom from the mother. Dolphins, I also know, are rapists and murderers outside that. So like that's this is true. an even level. <laughs> yeah. But also, the dolphins murder their kids, like, in multiple ways, mm. creative ways that take a long time and a lot of effort. Yeah, no, and, I, I'm... And the the reason is less survival-based. Right. It's actually in against the interest of their species. Yeah. <laughs> Which is impressive for evolution. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, it's just dolphins. Dolphins, dolphins suck. Dolphins suck. Do they suck the most, though? I think they suck the most. I think they suck yeah, the they most. Yeah, they suck the most. Dolphins suck the most. So th now we have our two winners. Again, the best dad was the Rhea, and the worst dad in the animal kingdom is the bottlenose dolphin. You first heard hair bracket here first. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you just throw the word bracket in there? <laughs> I don't know. I like the word bracket. Fair. 
<laughs> Fair enough. We just did a bracket. It's, we it's did. in there. All right, now that we're finished with the brackets, that leaves us with our something something a little softer than the bad dads. I'm a little down after all that. So we're going to go to a would you rather. Ben, would you rather only be able to lie or only be able to tell the truth? I think this is actually an easy choice and it is lying. Tell me hmm. more. Yeah, what's your reasoning? Okay, my reasoning, my reasoning is if someone asks you a question and you can only tell the truth, there is only one thing you can say, no matter how much of a terrible thing it is to say in the situation. If you can lie, you have infinite options on how to address the situation. None of them are true, but I think that having that flexibility is important. <laughs> but I feel like most things that people ask you are like, what do you want? Or like things of that nature. <laughs> oh my God, that's the worst. Going to a restaurant <laughs> is terrible. But but you can... You can so, all right, let's use that. Let's use that a restaurant as an example. If someone asks you what you would like, all you have to do is find two things you like and figure out which one you like more and then say the other one. Because technically, that's a lie because you want the thing you want the most. But you're okay getting the thing, the thing you want the second most. So, yeah, you can, you can get creative lies. I, I'll say this, though. I think doing finding a lie for every situation that makes you get what you want is going to be absolutely exhausting. It is. And also, if anyone just asks for a yes-no clarification, you're fucked. Oh, that's true. Yes-nos are a problem. Yes-nos are actually... a lot of yes-nos. Yes-nos are a very big problem. Also, you'll get stuck in an infinite loop if you go for fast food because it'd be like, would you like to add anything else? (laughs) 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 And it'd be like, yes. Yes. (laughs) is that it yes fucking thank you is, is that it no, no. <laughs> okay you're right <laughs> you'll be broke you can never go to mcdonald's i mean that's that's maybe that's a selling point you'll be healthier you can't get fast food okay so here's my here's my other take on why why telling truth is good i feel like just people in your life are gonna get tired of you even when they know that you're lying all the time it's going to be much harder to form relationships. And I feel like people are going to be, it'll be easier for them to get over you being honest all the time than lying all the time. I guess that's, yeah. you're going to have well, to be like real careful with what you do though. <laughs> I didn't really consider that if you're lying, they would know that you're lying. I'm assuming people will but pick But I guess up they could. It. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think how many times I lie during a day. It's like almost none. Like, yeah, I mostly tell the truth. Yeah. And plus like, you don't have to like, it, it doesn't make you like blurt out personal things that's true like right. you can definitely be honest in a way that doesn't ruin people like if they're like oh did you like my play you can be like honestly no but here's like what i liked about it is this and what i didn't like is this and this actually also you're not compelled to answer the question they ask you just have to say a truth <laughs> <laughs> i thought the costume design was excellent yeah mm. how'd you like my play did you know you can say 15% or more by switching to Geico? <laughs> That's actually, I didn't think about, because yeah, you're not, you're not compelled to answer every question that's asked of you. Yeah, you just have to be truthful. Right, you just always have to be truthful. So that does shift it more towards truth, I think, actually. Could it be a convenience, actually? Because, like, what if you're indecisive? That's a good like, point. If someone asks me at a restaurant, it's like, do you want, you know, this or this? And I'll be like... Uh, and then I just have to just say whatever I'm allowed to say. Right. Yeah. And then, and then it's like what I really wanted deep down. It makes dieting really hard. <laughs> but if you want to diet, like, it works out. I don't know. But you still want the cake. <laughs> oh, yeah. You have to lie to yourself to, to diet effectively. That's true. <laughs> oh, can you not lie to yourself anymore? Do you have to see yourself? Maybe that's refreshing. The honest light of truth. That's actually very refreshing. That's, that's actually healthy. a point in favor. <laughs> As, yeah, it's a point in favor of the truth. You, you, you convinced me, Marcus, with that statement. No, I think you're not. I don't think you can mentally be mentally healthy and be honest with yourself all the time. You have to live in some delusions. That's actually maybe a good point. So you will break. Like I have to live in this world where I believe anyone will ever want to listen to me speak into my microphone about dumb shit like <laughs> bad animal dads and whether I want to be lie or tell the truth. Right. Well, either way, I'm on. I'm on tell the truth. I think I have come around to yep. tell the truth. I think tell the. I'm on tell the truth too consensus awesome. this is the first time we've all agreed nope yeah we read once before haha <laughs> <laughs> i got you i have to lie <laughs> but wait 
If you have to lie and you just said that. I never lie. Wait, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that disconnected his microphone. We created a, a paradox. Yeah. And that was paradox static from all the paradox. Yeah, that was the sound of my microphone being sucked into a black hole. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I come to you from the parallel universe I've been sucked into after lying about lying. Do you, which do you still let you have through to the gate lie of the two? Tr- no, now I can tell the honest truth. Is that a lie? No, <laughs> wait. No, it's not a lie. I'm telling the truth now. And the truth is that we have cool merchandise now. Yeah, we got mugs and T-shirts and stickers and posters. Posters. Oh, we have a cool poster with all our first 75 questions on it, which is so sweet. I have to order one for my wall. And you can find that all on www.nerdchomp.com slash store. Nope. Damn it. <laughs> slash A-H store. Which <laughs> is the, the immediacy of the nope. <laughs> and yeah, so after you go to the store um, and buy our cool, cool t-shirts... You can join us next week, where we go into our lightning round number five, and we answer so many, so many, so many, probably like seven, eight-ish questions. <laughs> so many. <laughs> Some many. Seven to eight times more than usual. <laughs>